Hello, welcome to the MAM series, The Misunderstanding of Multiplicity. I'm in the kitchen making on my tippy toes and stirring the chili. I'm making some chili. I'm back in action a little bit. I have to pace myself. Um, for those of you that know, know that I've been sick for about three weeks. I'm just really sick. And I've been like living on rice and a little banana, maybe a sip of ginger ale, a little bit of dark tea, a couple crackers. I got a little crazy and had a little Dr. Pepper, but it's mostly Gatorade or the low calorie um, G series that Wegmans makes. Finally, by yesterday, I was getting a little hungry and feeling like my, I wasn't going to lose my balance if I ate or lose my stomach. So I found a recipe called um, Artisan Master's uh, Five Minute Bread Recipe. There's like three books these people have made. I can't think of the name of the book right now. I'm sorry, Jeff. I'm sorry, Zoe. <laughs> I know their names. I can't think of their last name. Um, I'll link to the books. I'm sure a lot of you have the books that I'm talking about. Where you make bread, you make a big amount of dough in a bucket or a big bowl and there's no kneading involved. You just stir the four ingredients together, salt, flour, um, water, and yeast. Stir it all together until there's no flour showing. The right temperature of water, just about 100 degrees body temperature, lukewarm. Just the right amount of yeast and salt. Um, you can the tailor salt to your liking. Um, I just tell you the recipe. <laughs> it's three cups of warm, lukewarm water, no more than your body temperature or up just about a hundred degrees. You don't want it any hotter than that. Two tablespoons of granulated active dry yeast or um, two packets of active dry yeast. One or one and a half to two tablespoons of kosher salt, and you can tailor that. You can use sea salt, kosher salt, whatever kind of salt you want. Um, I only used shy of a half of a tablespoon of salt. And to my liquid, I used a smidgen of sugar. I am like, it's from little. Feed the yeast with a little sugar, just a little. So I put like about an eighth of a teaspoon in there. Then you take a six quart um, bowl or a bucket, a food bucket, and you put, put all your liquid in the bottom of the bowl and without measuring, I mean without sifting your flour, you use regular all-purpose flour. You can use bread flour, but you can use all-purpose flour too. You just do the dip a cup and skim it off with your knife. Or some people do the dip and shake it off. Doesn't matter. Six and a half cups of flour. Put that all in. Take a big spoon. Stir it around until there's no dry flour. And it takes less than five minutes, really. I think the five minutes is adding all your ingredients together and stirring it. Once you do that, just take a you don't want to use an airtight lid. You want to use a loose lid or loose, loose foil. Just cover it on top with plastic or foil, but not airtight, or a light lid over the top. Set it aside for two hours to rise. And it will just balloon it off. And you'll have all this dough. <laughs> you'll have about four, uh, four pounds of bread dough or you can use it for pizza dough, or you can use it for flatbread dough. So it's an artisan bread that you just pop in the oven, either on a pizza stone or on a cookie tray, with a cup of hot water in a broiler pan underneath it. And at 450, you're going to just bake your bread for um, 25 to 30 minutes. And you want to wait till your oven's been preheated about 20 minutes and then pop your 
water into your, uh, and it'll make a sizzle sound, and it'll kind of trap the steam into the boiler pan in your oven. And that steam is going to help create the um, crust on the top of the bread, a nice golden crust. Whereas with some breads, you got to do an egg wash or a milk or a water wash um, or oil or something. This one, nothing. The steam just makes the crust. And what you do is you reach into your bucket when it's done and take out about a grapefruit size of dough. You can either use um, kitchen shears or a knife, serrated knife, cut off the end. And then less than 30, just 30 to 60 seconds at the most, you're going to just pull out and turn over every quarter, almost like maybe a mushroom cap over on itself. And what you're doing is you're kind of taking the dough, going around and stretching the ends, turning them under to make a ball or, well once you make, if you make a ball, you would then shape it into a, like a log and let it rise for, um, of, if you're doing a, a small loaf, about 40 to 60 minutes, if you're doing a large loaf, about 120 minutes, and um, let that rise and then pop it into your preheated oven, it's been preheated 20 minutes for 25 to 30 minutes. And before you put it in, you're just going to dust it liberally with your flour and make some slashes in the top of it so that the um, air can escape. And it's just a, it's a wonderful uh, bread recipe. So, have my bread. I'll show you it. So, I haven't been able to get in the kitchen and cook, so I, I don't want to overdo it. I overdid it last night. But, this is my artisan bread. It's in, it's in, um, I wanted mine to look more like uh, Shabbat bread. So um, that took no time at all. Two hours it was sitting by itself. 60 minutes it was raising, and 30 minutes it was in the oven, and then it was done. And I have artisan bread, and it's just beautiful. So I'm making chili and rice right now. And um, I mean by a bucket. When you see some people doing this, they're using a big, like, kitchen food bucket, like you would find in a restaurant. You can actually get these at the dollar store, these um, gallon containers. You can pop it in here, but you don't want to put it in an airtight container, especially the first two days. So I just have this kind of setting on top. It's not really screwed into it. And it's got some... Um, some I just put some of this on top of it, so I don't like the smell of my refrigerator or anything to get in it. And then there's all my dough. And oh my God, it just gets better and better as you keep it in the refrigerator, especially if it sits for a couple days. The taste, the smell gets better. And see, I'm not, I'm not going to screw it down. I'm just going to put this on top. That's it. And in two days, then I can screw it down. But for 14 days, you can use this dough. Now, if I wanted to make pizzas, I would just take out a little bit of it and roll it out into a 12-inch square or 9-inch square or whatever I wanted. Roll it out to about an eighth of an inch. Pop it in your, put your toppings on it. Pop it into your um, oven. It's done. If I wanted to make rolls, roll them up, make rolls. Let them rise like you did the first bread. If you want to make a loaf of bread again, you would take out a mount, shape it the way you want to, let it rise for about 60 minutes to 120 minutes, and pop it in the oven. So it just depends on what you're making. If you're making like a non-flat bread, you don't have to let it rise. If um, I'm going to try to make some bread sticks to go with this, some cheesy sticks, and I'm going to twist those and let them rise before I bake them. I'll let you know how they turn out. And that's what I've been doing. Um, I'm thoroughly exhausted. <laughs> I'm going all day. Um, had a lot going on with my health, so I wanted to say thank you to Zen and recovery wishes and best health to Zen group.
My love to Cheryl and Macy and Holly and Dixie and Joan and Mammy and Ty and everyone there. You uh, inspire me very much. Talk to you more about that later. Keep resting, keep taking any help you can. Don't be too brave. Um, and recover from your surgery. And it's over. And you win. And uh, Lori, love to you and the folks out there in Canada. And I know it's been stressful a couple years for you and for a couple of folks out here, a couple of hard years. And I really just wish the best for everyone. Devin, I'm sending my love. Thank you so much for sending over Christmas, the treats, the Christmas treats for Dustin. And the lip balm for me, which I really use every day, the Burt's Buex pepper, peppermint lip balm. I love it. And uh, especially since I've been so nauseous, the peppermint really helps. So thank you so much. And your card was beautiful. Tommy and Melissa and everyone, I love you. I most definitely will call you when I need help. And you never have to worry about me not going to get help. I have been to the doctors just about every other day for the past three weeks. Got a lot of tests I'm doing. And um, yeah, there were times I could have used help and I could have called people and I didn't because I don't do that anymore. I don't call people that um, I've had to ask for a lot of help in my lifetime with raising my kids, with um, at times before when I've been sick. And it's always been counted against me as a weakness. So now I don't reach out. I don't. It's been counted as a not good thing. I am in a situation where I'm having a lot of neurological tests done, a lot of thyroid tests, a lot of everything. And when I need help, I will definitely call. I know who to call. And um, I know who I can call in my family and who I can't. And I know um, who I can call with my friends and who I can't. But it meant everything to know that you cared to reach out the way you did. And I love you for it. I love you for that. Lily, thank you for resubscribing. You're always safe. And with me, really. You know that. And I'm so blessed for all the comments that you've given, which has helped me to look at things differently, too. You know, when we're out here talking about multiplicity and DID and everything, there's so many different opinions out here. And I think because one person chooses to blog, um, you know, you might not think anybody has a different opinion of it, but or that if you're commenting but you're not blogging, doesn't matter. No, every comment matters because it helps us to all look at another, a third option, a fourth option, a fifth option. It helps us not to analyze it to death, but to get, a, get some good ideas out there. Think outside of the box and not just keep thinking one way. Every comment is valid. And uh, I know exactly what you mean. And I haven't been ignoring you guys. I'm just paying attention to my health right now, my physical, emotional, things are changing in my um, living circumstances. Um, people that live below me moved out all week and all last night. <laughs> and the people across the hall moved out and the new people are moving in today. So it's been nonstop. Movement. Um, Monday I'm going for a test called Evoke evoke potentials EP4 and uh, I don't think I have to have an MRI for a while and then I have to have an EEG and then I have to go have a thyroid uptake test and then um, hopefully I'll have some answers for what's going on in my body because it's actually two different things that are going on at once. I've got thyroid issue and a neurological issue. So I'm getting it all taken care of. Okay, so I've got rice cooking, chili cooking, bread done, and I think I'm done. Everybody have a nice Super Bowl. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.